Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Ryzen Threadripper 1900X has now launched $549. 8 cores, 16 threads, base speed of 3.8, turbo to 4.0 with an XFR of 4.2. Sound familiar? Pretty much the same thing as the 1800X on the consumer X370 and B350 platforms, but this time for the high-end enthusiast desktop platform, the X399. Should you buy one? Probably not, no. It fills a hole in AMD's product line, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now this doesn't mean I don't like AMD's processors. I do. I think the Ryzen 7 1700 is the best processor value for the money on the market today from AMD or Intel. If you are on a budget, if you want performance for the dollar, the Ryzen 7 1700 with the included race bar cooler is an incredible value for the money. If you do not want to overclock, however, but you want the higher performance, the 1800X is an excellent value for the money and it installs on very reasonably priced motherboards. If, however, you need the high-end enthusiast desktop platform, if you came here because you really do want an X399 board, no problem. Buy a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, spend the $1,000, get the 16 cores, 32 threads, get the top-end CPU, it's worth the money. The astute among you might also notice that the Intel i7-7820X is also sitting on the desk. That is a $599 processor, $50 more than the 1900X. It does have fewer PCI Express lanes, but it does run at a higher clock speed and it has more performance. I don't even need to benchmark them to know that. The AMD Press Deck does not include benchmarks from that chip because it beats the 1900X in everything. Although, of course, the 1950X will absolutely crush that CPU in anything multi-threaded related. Of course, in fairness, it does cost more. That's 600, the 1950X is 1,000. But in fairness, if you have the kind of money to buy an X299 or an X399 motherboard, they are not cheap boards in general, then I do think the $1,000 processors make more sense. If you're looking for value for the money, I would skip the high-end platforms completely. Ryzen 7 1700, eight cores, 16 threads. That is the value. That is really the deal. Once you step up above this, you might as well go to the higher end processors. By the time you've spent the money on what an X399 motherboard costs, the cost difference, $450 from the 1900X to the 1950X, just does not justify bothering with the X399 unless you're going whole hog. I understand the PCI Express lanes are valuable to some people, but frankly, the kind of people who actually will use 64 lanes and not just want them because it makes them feel better will also use 16 cores and 32 threads. Now, in fairness, that processor does hold a very small special niche in the people who want to use a single computer for live streaming and also want 144 frames per second on a high free refresh rate monitor, which Ryzen will not do because it just doesn't have the per core performance to give you 144 frames per second in AAA games. But beyond that use case, a live streamer is perfectly well suited by a Ryzen 7 1700 for a whole lot less money. Now, if you're still not convinced, let me offer you two simple numbers, $400, $950. The Ryzen 7 1700 installed on one of those B350 motherboards back there is $400, cooler included. The Ryzen Threadripper 1900X is $550, plus about $300 for the lowest end motherboards currently available, plus $100 for a decent cooler, either a tall Noctura cooler or a 240 or 280 millimeter liquid cooler to keep that beast cool. And then all of a sudden you're looking at about $950. How much real world performance difference is there? Try this, H.264 video encoding in handbrake, 1900X at stock speeds is 10% faster than a Ryzen 7 1700 at stock speeds. Yeah, really, that's all there is to it. You are spending more than double the money to get 10% more performance. That is a terrible value for the money. Handbrake H.264 encoding on the 1950X is dramatically faster compared to either of those two. If you're gonna spend $300 on a motherboard, if you're gonna step up to that platform because you are serious about things like video encoding, buy a proper Threadripper, buy the 1950X 16 core 32 thread $1,000 chip and be done with it. 
These next slides that I'm going to show you are part of the press deck that AMD provided as part of the 1900X launch. And of course, this video is being filmed on the day it launched, but really, as I said before, get the 1950X if you're getting a Threadripper. The first notable point is that NVMe Bootable RAID is going to be offered for the X399 platform, Bootable RAID Mode 0, 1, and 10 for up to 10 devices. This is sort of a knock against Intel for the fact that they are not offering out-of-the-box bootable RAID on the X299 platform. It's nice, but frankly, you shouldn't be booting to a RAID mode, except maybe RAID 1 for certain circumstances anyway. And as far as the performance goes, you shouldn't be doing your work on your boot drive. That's what additional drives are for, but hey, it's there if you care. This slide shows the three different models, the three different price points, and the base and turbo clock speeds of each of the processors. As I said before, the only CPU that I recommend here is the $999 Threadripper 1950X. If you are going to go to the high-end platform, skip the others. In my opinion, the true value here is actually the top-end chip. Here you can see the Ryzen 7 1800X compared to the three Threadripper chips. One of the common things people look at are the PCI Express lanes. I want to talk about that 24 down there for a second with Ryzen 7, which is by the way true of all the Ryzen processors. 24 gives you 16 for the graphics card, four for an NVMe M.2 drive, and four for the uh, actual chipset itself. Now on motherboards that have two M.2 slots, one runs directly to the processor and one runs through the chipset. Something worth noting, which is why you can't do, for example, bootable NVMe RAID because they are not directly to the CPU. The reality is, how many people does this really impact? How many people really want to do bootable NVMe RAID? I suppose if you do, maybe you should be on the high-end platform, but I find that the 24 is sufficient for most people. If you are a professional content creator or professional developer, then you should definitely be on the high-end platform, which is again, the 1950X. This next slide attempts to show full-time video streaming professionals game stream configuration. To be blunt, this is a stretch. First of all, you wouldn't have three NVMEs in RAID. That's just silly. A single one would be plenty. The capture card doesn't use 16 lanes. And to be honest, if you really are a full-time streamer, you should have two computers, one to do the capturing and the streaming and the other to play games so that problems or reboots do not affect your actual live stream. It's a nice idea, but Ryzen 7 1700 frankly does this just fine for casual streamers and professional streamers should have two computers anyway. For content creation, rendering on GPUs, fair enough. This is actually a reasonable solution. However, if you are honestly going to have four different Radeon Pro graphics cards in a machine, are you really on Threadripper or are you on Epic? I would submit that you probably would be looking at the server platforms, but since this is not my wheelhouse, and frankly it's not the wheelhouse of my viewers in general, I'm just going to skip past this, but it is a fair point. For people looking at this sort of thing, it makes sense. But I would also think they'd be on the 16 core 32 thread 1950X, not the 1900. Here we come to the first chart that shows line by line the three Threadripper processors versus their roughly equivalent Intel high-end Skylake X processors. Now, of course, this does look very favorable to Threadripper, and in certain scenarios, that Threadripper 1950X is dramatically faster than the i9-7900X. Although, as I discussed in my comparison video between the two, not all, H.265 HVEC video encoding is actually faster on the i9-7900X, but most tasks are going to be faster on the Threadripper. Certainly H.264 is faster and some other things are faster as well. Which one makes sense for you depends entirely upon your use case as I discussed in that video. And here we have game performance. Now, AMD did not compare the 1900X to the i7-7820X because of course the Intel chip would crush it and the prices are so close. If you have gaming in mind, it makes no sense, but the 1900X shouldn't be used for gaming. A Ryzen 7 1700 or frankly even a Ryzen 5 1600 is really all you need for gaming and you will still get excellent performance. I would like to call out three of these four tests. Take a look at Hitman and GTA 5, for example. Notice that the Threadripper 1900X is slower than the Ryzen 7 1800X, even though the Threadripper turbos to four and XFRs to 4.2. 
The reason for this is due to the inner uh, chip latencies because there's actually two four core processors inside the Threadripper. It's two 4x zeros with half of each of the modules disabled and there's a latency penalty when you're moving information between RAM between the two dual channel chips. The reality is the 1900X in many situations is actually slower than the 1800X, especially in gaming. Productivity, on the other hand, is a completely different matter. Take a look at the third one over here, Handbrake. The 100% represents the Ryzen 7 1700 out-of-the-box performance, 6% more performance for the Ryzen 7 1800X. Now these are at stock clock speeds, and then we have 100% for the Threadripper 1900X. I kid you not, going from $400 for motherboard, cooler, and chip to $950 for motherboard, cooler, and chip for the 1900X, you are looking at a whopping 10% performance increase. Now it's absolutely true that the performance increase jumps to 120 to 125% in the other three loads they give you. Is that really worth the price increase from $400 to $950? Absolutely not, not in any circumstance. Want more proof of that? Let's take a look at the next chart. Now we have a chart comparing the 1900X, the 1920X, the 1950X, the three Threadripper processors. The 100% represents the $550 1900X. Take a look right in the middle of your screen, handbrake, same thing as before. We have a 63% performance increase going from the 1900X to the 1950X. That is $450 more dollars, but you're already spending $950. So you're looking at $1,350 for chip cooler and the motherboard versus $950 for a 63% performance increase. This is why the 1900X makes no sense. This is why if you need the high-end desktop platform, if you're serious about productivity, the 1900X should be a pass. Buy a 1950X. If this kind of work, if these five tasks, if video rendering, 3D animation, file work, if that kind of stuff is important to you, you need the 1950X. Don't bother with the lower two end thread rippers. It is not worth the performance hit in my opinion. And frankly, I think the dollars represent that very clearly. You actually get more performance than your spending percentage dollar increase over the chip motherboard and cooler combination. I mentioned this briefly during my Threadripper versus Skylake X video that we are starting to get full coverage cooling solutions from the various manufacturers. I strongly encourage you not to use the older existing cooling solutions on the market. Gamers Nexus and Jay's Two Cents have been doing some excellent videos about these new water blocks and these new coolers from the various companies. I highly recommend you check out both channels because they do uh, this sort of high-end cooling better than I do. It's sort of their wheelhouse, so I would direct you their direction for that kind of testing, for that kind of cooler testing. But basically the results that they've been getting so far is that it is a noticeable and dramatic cooling performance increase by using these coolers rather than the adapters and the older style round coolers that were available at launch. Finally here you can see a chart of all of the Threadripper and all of the Ryzen 7 processors in one place. As I said before, the real deal here, the real value for the money is that Ryzen 7 1700. And if you look at the actual performance between the Ryzen 7 1700 and even the Ryzen Threadripper 1900X, that 1700 is an amazing deal and it remains a highly recommended processor for me. Even at stock clock speeds, it's very impressive, but it's also very easy to overclock to 3.7 gigahertz if you want to using the included Wraith Spire cooler. Well, I hope all of that was interesting and informative and perhaps gave you some insight into what you might decide to do. Of course, ultimately the decision of what to buy is up to you and I'm sure at least somebody out there is going to buy a 1900X, but I hope that I've made a convincing case for why it should be a pass. Now, I do appreciate the fact that AMD included me in the press briefing. They are unfortunately not sending me one. They are not sampling anyone on the 1900X, or at least that's what they told me. And as far as I know, I will not be getting a 1950X. I would love to. I certainly would love to test it and put it through its paces. I'm quite certain it would win in quite a few categories. But without one, I simply have to go based on their benchmarks and the other benchmarks done by the various other reviewers. 
most of whom do an absolutely wonderful job. I've referenced them in the past, Jay's Two Cents, Gamers Nexus, Anantec, and others do an absolutely wonderful job with those reviews. You should definitely check them out. Now I will be doing a full build video on the i7-8720X that Intel was kind enough to send to me, and hopefully once that's done, maybe AMD will send me a chip, but that's okay. As I said before, the value for the money really is the Ryzen 7 1700. I have been using it full time on my channel for all of my video work since it launched back in March. I've been very, very happy with it. And if you are looking for the best deal in terms of performance for the dollar spent, that remains it. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below this video. Questions and comments in the comment section. Please check out the video description. Links to all these processors will be down there to both Amazon and Newegg. Please check those out. Links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon accounts will be down there as well. If you'd like to follow me or perhaps contribute to my channel, I would certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.